two former dogs who don't need much of an introduction, Devin Bellamy, Brian Harrion. We got a running back in the house and an edge. Thanks. Former linebacker, <laughs> so we've got defense, offense covered. Guys, it's hard to believe, but in 2017, that was the last time a dog's team won the SEC title. They've been a bunch of times under head coach Kirby Smart, have only won one. Best memories from that game, go. Uh, the best memory for that game was one, it was payback for us. We had lost to Auburn, I think it was week nine or eight around that time. So it was payback for us. And since we lost to them so late, we knew that it was a playoff game mentality that we could not lose again and that we were going to be able to go to the next level. So it was just really just this ultimate focus. But it was so much fun because it was a revenge game for us. Like we had them circled, circled. Brian? I had just got there, what, 2016, mm -hmm. and it was already there. But that was our first time being number one in the nation. And then we lost to Auburn. We had to got the big head. So yeah, it was kind of like a payback game. And the running backs didn't do too good down in Auburn, so we had to do real good that game. And everybody came to play. Holyfield, Nick, Sony, Swift, everybody right. went crazy that game. And they embarrassed us too. Like, they embarrassed us. They carry on Johnson juking me so bad. I've never been juked like that in my life. And that was on my mind. So actually, I think, was it in the weight room? We kept playing what was it, Gus Malzone? He said, uh, Nah, he had, we had him up on the TV screens and the words and the pictures of him about what he said after the game. And I the think he conference. said something along the lines of, we show put a whooping on them. Nah, we, we whipped the dog crap out yeah. of them, didn't we? So we had that playing in the yeah. weight room for like weeks. All weeks. the way until the SEC championship. Yeah. And it we worked, had it in the bathroom. Oh yeah, for sure, it was a yeah. yeah. We would have the Auburn pictures in the urinals, like in the toilets, like when we use the bathroom, maybe everywhere where we just had to like go that somewhere. Was, that was personal. Would you imagine that even though playing LSU Saturday isn't personal for this current team, that Kirby Smart and his staff will do things like that around the facility throughout the week? Absolutely. Yeah. He does it. If it's a big game and it means something to him, he'll do it every time. He's going to make sure he put a lot of emphasis on it. It's kind of different, though, I feel like, because they are, they are undefeated. And uh, we was only the number one team for one week, or I think, and we wanted that title for a long time. So it was just more of a, of a revenge type style game. I think for them now is just do what we do. Um, we've been number one for a long time, I think besides one week. So just do what we do and um, just take care of business basically. So I think it's kind of a difference, but the motivation will still be there. Kirby Smart, we talk about it a lot. It's obvious what he's done. It means so much to him. He's an alumni. He played for Georgia. You guys know him better than anybody else. You guys played for him. You mm. have to put up with him. Very thick <laughs> skin you have to have to be one of his players because he really knows how to get under your skin. Yeah, he does. How has he changed things in Athens? I think when I was there with Rick, me being from Georgia, Georgia was always just that school just because it was Georgia and you're from here. Mm -hmm. So you get there and we're winning 10 games a year, and that's cool. You play for Georgia, then we win in 10 games, everybody cool. Um, and I think that started to fall down onto the players as we got really complacent with just being Georgia and going to the SEC championship game or going to these bowl games. So the biggest dynamic was when Coach Smart got there was the preparation. We understood that, which, is what he always says good is the enemy to great and when he got there he just worked us so hard and it was kind of a rebuttal there because we weren't used, used to that at all but we understood okay those guys over there across that state line in Bama are preparing differently they have different mindsets they are machines right and that's why they are the way they are and once we accepted that after year one <clears throat> We was rolling from there. We have to talk about Stetson Bennett. You guys both played with him. That's, and that's my favorite player. He's been in college football for what seems like 100 years. Since <laughs> <laughs> I was born. And Coach. so you guys can truly speak to where he started and where he is now because you guys lived it. Right. Yeah. Right. When Stet first got to school, I think it was 2017 spring. Springtime he got there as what? He no, came the year I, with me. I left in 2017, so I was with Stetson. 2017. 2017 was his first year? Yeah, yeah. 2017 was wow. his year there. So he came as a walk-on, and, you know, we had great quarterbacks. Like, 
Jacob Eason, right. who had Jake from, Jake from, you know, so it was just, we've seen what good arms look like in talent, but he just was a little shorter and he was like a walk on. So we like, dang, this kid is good. Right, but like, right. it's just his height that's messing him up. And he had, we had the Rose Bowl game coming up. So he had to be Baker Mayfield for them. Yeah. Oh, man. man. He might be better than Baker Mayfield. <laughs> yeah. That's how the defense was looking at him. Like, man, we can't even practice against him. Like, yeah. Coach Smart was cussing all of them. He was, because he was. Stetson was really just going crazy. I mean, when, if you stand there, I play, I stand next to Stetson. So when he throw the ball, you can hear him flick the ball. Like, it's like whistling. Like, like it's just, I, he's a talented kid, man. He came a long way. He's just one of my favorite players because not a lot of people give him a lot of props. So, you know, I always talk to him and make sure he keeps his head up. Um. I definitely remember him. He used to make our life hell. Um, just the running and back and forth, because he was running the scout team O, so he had free reigns to do what he wanted to do. He could go completely off script. And you see him now completely going off script and making a lot of plays. But I mean, the dead leg he does, he's done that to me a thousand times. Lorenzo, Raquan, I mean, the list goes on. And I never would have thought that it would turn into this. I always used to tell him though, bro, you may want to go ahead and leave and go get you, you know what I'm saying? But you can play some ball. But um, just to see where he's at now, as far as how calm he is, he takes command of the offense and to watch him still have that scout team Stetson, that swagger. but also put it in a bottle and run a team. It's, it's definitely a beautiful thing. So I have a lot of respect for Stetson. Davin Bellamy, Brian Harrion, thank you for your time. Come on, man. <laughs>